as you know, this series started really from scratch, covering about every topic in a very short form to get us here where we can say, okay, let's create a game. And that's what we're going to do in this episode. We'll do this by cloning Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird is this mobile game that was a notorious for uh, the difficulty of playing it. I personally completely sucked doing it. And second, it, it really gained attention, so much attention that the developer um, uh, pulled it from the store because he couldn't cope with, uh, with the publicity that he had. Also, and more importantly, somebody did this already so that we can learn from this project. This is a website called lessmilk.com. It's um, a website of um, Thomas Palev, or Thomas Palev, I don't know how you pronounce it properly because I don't know where he's from. But um, he started a series of tutorials similar to mine, just that he uh, took the approach of creating one HTML5 game per week, which is very cool. I mailed Thomas and asked for permission to use one of or several of his games in, in this tutorial and um, he approved it, so thank you very much Thomas for that. Um, the thing that I like about lessmilk.com is that he covers a variety of game principles and he puts them in a very simple way so that you can learn from them. So three days ago um, he wrote this tutorial which covers everything that you need to know to recreate Flappy Bird with Phaser. And he claims it's just 65 lines of JavaScript, which makes it ideal for this sort of video tutorial we're doing here. I also mentioned Phaser before. It's another open source mobile HTML5 game framework that Thomas uses for, for his Flappy Bird clone and for his um, uh, HTML5 game per week challenge. It's on GitHub and um, you can see all the source code. By the way, I'll cover GitHub and the importance of a versioning system in, a, uh, in a, another tutorial. Our difference from Thomas' approach is that we will create this Flappy Bird clone in, in Jay's Fiddle so that we can uh, learn from, from the uh, code right in the browser. There is a small problem though. Phaser is not among the prepared uh, JavaScript libraries from the makers of JS Fiddle, so we will have to add the library ourselves. Basically, we need one file that is um, the minified phaser library. And uh, we need a place where this library exists on, on an online server. And I looked in the forums of HTML5 game devs, which as far as I know is uh, are the developers of, of the phaser library and um, we find this link here um, Cloudflare is a is a company that hosts many of those frameworks of those JS JavaScript files so that you don't have to which is very nice thank you Cloudflare and we, we will take the um, provided phaser minified um, uh, library to, to, to add it to RJ's fiddle. So we copy the link and add it to our basic JS fiddle. Thomas kindly provided a basic template that you can download, which is um, the minified uh, phaser library, that's the link we just copied, the index.html, main.js, which is the game code and two images as stand-ins for the birds. And if you download them, you have them on your desktop. But again, we need them online because we want to recreate this in JS Fiddle. So if we look into the index.html file, we have a little bit of CSS, we have a div, and we include the phaser uh, library and the main JS. Okay, that means we need to add the div to the HTML, which we do right now. And we need to take the CSS, put it over here. And we don't need much more because the main JS will basically our JavaScript window over here. Over here, sorry. 
Okay, so now we need the basic game code. We'll copy that and paste it into the JavaScript part. Okay, we should be able to run it. And we see a black rectangle, which is what we are supposed to see. I'll save this as a basic template so that I can reuse this again. Um, let's name this um, basic phaser template. Kudos, Thomas, Palif. <laughs> okay. Now he um, discussed. Uh, he, he states that that the basic structure was discussed in a previous tutorial, which we find at the um, at the top of of this tutorial over here, and. Uh, let's follow this Hello World phaser example for just for a moment. First of all, you should really read this. I will provide the links in the description of the tutorials as always, also the JS Fiddle references. But again, please read this, but for the time being, it's just important that he, this is a very basic Hello World um, phaser example. And we follow this in another JS Fiddle. Okay, in this um, Hello World, tutorial from Thomas, we have the skeleton code, we copied into the JS fiddle already. And he wants us to add three lines, basically, um, one line into the preload function, which loads an image, second line in the create function, which creates a sprite. And um, the third one that um, modifies a property, the angle, uh, which should go into the update function. I'll copy this over to, to the JS fiddle. Okay, I made all the three changes. I added the, 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 the image loading, I added the, the sprite creation and the um, rotation of the sprite. If I hit run, we see that something indeed is moving, but it's not the sprite, it's not the hello PNG of course, is because the path is wrong. This path would be okay if I would have started it from my local hard disk, but I didn't. I started it on the JS Fiddle servers and there's no uh, assets folder and there's no Hello PNG. Now, I uploaded the Hello PNG to one of my web servers. And if I just copy this link and paste it in the JS Fiddle, you will find out that it still doesn't work. So if we look into the developer console to find out if there's an error, we see that the cross origin image load deny is denied by the cross origin resource sharing policy. This is a very complicated word for saying um, the two servers, my web server over here, and the JS Fiddle server, it didn't um, comply on um, uh, share, uh, sh sharing resources. This is basically because the Curious Electric server doesn't allow to embed images from uh, another JavaScript file, which is a security thing. So since I can't access the um, um, the headers from this server because it's it's from a um, from, from a pro provider. Uh, I remember that um, Google Docs, or now it is Google Drive, um, has the ability to serve files in a, a CORS course way. So I um, added three images to, the, uh, to my Google Drive. And now we have a somewhat complicated URL that we can add to our JS Fiddle, which is uh, this one. As you can see, this is a uh, googleusercontent.com, this is not my domain anymore, it still displays the hello world, but if I copy this and um, enter this into the into here, then you can see that the image gets loaded and everything works. Okay, so now we have, have our second um, JS fiddle, which we would call um, 
hello world a phaser example and it's still kudos thank you to thomas thomas palov so to not override our um, previous template we fork this this means we create a new url at js fiddle and we have a now we have two js fiddles on our dashboard the basic phaser template and the hello world phaser example now coming back to the tutorial we finished the hello world tutorial we can go back to the flappy bird tutorial and basically we do the same thing um, we copy code over there and try to understand what happens there in a moment so if we briefly go back to the uh, hello world example we see that we added uh, the the um, the preload command which loads the image and we add the sprite i said that before and um, we um, modify a property from uh, from the hello sprite all all of the heavy lifting is in the um, phaser library so the phaser library already gives us the functionality to um, to do all these things with three lines of code um, that's why we use game frameworks instead of uh, writing all the co code alone of course you need to know the library and we get to um, find out about the library while following the tutorials so i went back to the original basic uh, phaser template and switch back to Thomas tutorial and he tells us to update the preload create and update preload create and update functions so I basically take this whole thing over here and uh, replace these three functions with uh, with my copy buffer and he tells us also to add these two functions below And then we hit run and then we see that something's happening and it's happening very fast so let's see what we just added we set the background color to this value to this color we again um, loaded a sprite and we see that this is of course the wrong um, the wrong value the wrong folder and um, we ignore that for a second and we look at the create function we add the sprite again and we add gravity to the to the bird to make it fall let's change this value for a second so that we see that this influences the the um, um the velocity of falling down let's do this even more okay now it's very slow and we see the next uh, two lines add the space key from the keyboard to a, a function called jump and this is exactly the function we just added and this sets the velocity of the bird so if, if i hit space here then you see you can see this goes up very fast because this value matches the thousand over there um, or should match and if we decrease this value and hit run again then you see that the hitting the space bird uh, the space key um, doesn't um, accelerate it as much as before. Uh, please note that we have a known bug, so to speak, here because we didn't correct the, um, the URL yet. We'll come to that later. Let's go back to the tutorial first. And we have um, the next uh, paragraph is the pipes. Uh, we want the pipes that the Flappy Bird has to pass. We want to insert this into our game. So again, we um, copy and paste the the commands over to the js fiddle and uh, understand later how this works okay i did this again uh, we still have a broken link here we ignore that for the moment and i added the various changes that uh, thomas proposed and um, i added especially some functions outside the update and um, uh, create uh, functions and um, this, it tends to get a little bit messy from from the copy and paste action so one nice feature from js fiddle is is, a, is this thing here a tidy up re-indent messy code this is exactly what we need and if we hit that then you can see this is much more readable and um, 
um, it looks much nicer. So if we hit run, then we see that there's something happening, but actually no pipe shows up. If we look in on the console, we see that there's an error and the error says cannot call method loop of undefined, which is here. So obviously this uh, game time events loop doesn't exist. Um, I tried to figure out for a couple of minutes what that is and I found out that the external resources phaser min js is um, version 1.1.3 while the provided um, phaser uh, version of the um, of the example is 1.1.5. So I copied this to my public Dropbox and um, try to find out if that's the th that was the problem. So I add this resource. Ah, that was not too smart. Okay. So hit run again. And we see that this was the problem. So to recap, the CDN version is the 1.1.3 and does not work with the Flappy Bird example. I provide the Dropbox public link in the description so that you can access the 1.1.5 um, uh, framework. As you can see, well, there's not much happening right now because uh, there's no collision detection in it. So, the yes, it looks a little bit like a game, but no, it doesn't work yet. Still, I will um, save this first uh, by entering the title here and by forking this into a new JS fiddle. Going back to the lessmilk.com uh, entry, we add scoring collision by adding a variable holding the score, uh, displaying the score, and um, uh, modifying the score, and by calling this command which says once uh, the bird and the pipe overlaps, uh, game over, restart. Now by adding these, we have a working Flappy Birds game, albeit a very simple one because since I um, changed the parameters, well, it's not even, not even now it is simple. So let's change the values back to, I think it was a thousand and minus 350. And this is much harder. Wow. Ah, okay. Okay. I still suck. Now let's wrap this up by adding the right um, images. Sorry, copy image URL. That was the bird. and the pipe. Okay, this looks better. <laughs> and that is our working Flappy Birds clone. Again, we have to thank um, the author of this um, Thomas Palev, who created this tutorial, and I basically just followed it. And please go and visit his website, lessmilk.com, and check out the other games from him. Probably we will take one or two of them to um, recreate them here. And um, I'll save this. I'll provide the links in the description. And, well, thanks for watching.